Seriously, I'm gonna stop watching. Fine. What's up guys, it's Raiskat here, and today I'm going to give you guys a little something so you can climb to a higher elo by the end of the season. I'm here to tell you how you can play Thresh and practically never lose a game in low elo. The playstyle is nothing new though, people have been doing it since the start of League, and it's how most high elo supports play Thresh, Alistar, Blitzcrank and so forth. I like to call it Jingoing, since the term Jingoism very accurately describes the playstyle. It's just a fancy name I made up though, since it's basically just heavy roaming. I believe this is the easiest and the most consistent way to win games on Thresh nowadays, and there are a few reasons why. The biggest reason is the RN supports and the scaling ADCs. What do those champions want to do in the early game? They want to AFK, they want to farm, they want to get their items. You can't afford to do that on Thresh though. Thresh has always been a ticking time bomb. The later the game goes on, the weaker you usually get. Unlike Ajana, who gets stronger the later the game goes on. But now, with the Arden sensor being so popular, the time limit for Thresh has been reduced from 20 to 25 minutes all the way down to like 10 to 15 minutes. Which means winning your lane alone is not enough to win consistently anymore. What if your solo laners go 0 and 3? Your 3 and 0, or hell, even a 5 and 0 Silver Tristana. He's probably not gonna be able to do anything to a 3 and 0 super tank in the jungle or the top lane. So your lead is basically worth nothing. And the clock is still ticking for that Ardent on the enemy support. Not only that, but snowballing lanes is harder than ever right now. Um, probably not in low elo, but in high elo the heal barrier meta makes it pretty much impossible for the uh, bottom lane to die. Healing and shielding is really popular. Both lanes are playing low damage in the early game ADCs. Overall, it's just harder to some planes. That's why I believe the best way to win nowadays, if you don't play an Arden support, is to try and win every lane you can, even top lane and jungle. So how do we do it consistently? How do we snowball every lane to our favor? The truth is, you can't do it in every single game, but there are signs that you should be looking for to make the most out of Thresh's early game roaming, and that's what I'm here for today. First, let's talk about when you can go somewhere else. These conditions don't mean I should instantly leave, but if they're met, you have the option to go somewhere else. The number one rule. The enemy bottom lane cannot kill your ADC 1v2, no matter what. If you're low elo, it's possible that your ADC dies even when they shouldn't, when you're roaming. This is the absolute number one rule. Your ADC cannot die for your roams no matter what. Always keep this in mind. So, how do we determine when it's safe to leave your ADC alone? There are five basic rules when you can leave him alone. A. When your enemy bottom lane is playing an RN support. RN supports usually don't have engages, so it's safe to leave your ADC alone. The only exceptions to the rule are when you play against Tristana, Draven or Kalista with an immobile ADC. Like in the current clip, the only way Vayne is going to die in this position is if he is the world champion of Vayne spotting, otherwise he is completely safe to farm alone. Also make sure you are healthy enough to fight before every roam. B. The lane is going to push towards you, but you must never leave when the wave is under your tower and the enemy bot lane will stay. Missing some XP is alright, as long as you can be sure that your roam still do something, but never leave your ADC in a diveable position or when you will miss a lot of creeps. Your ADC is coming to land from base, or he just went back. You can't die while going into the lane, right? D. He's already dead. He can't die again if he's dead, right? 
In the current clip, for some reason I thought that Ari was our least sin, and I just die. But if you look a little bit further, I can tell that uh, the two of these are going to die, and the bottom lane tower is gone. So what is the point of me even going there? Instead of going bot lane to waste my time, I make the decision to go top lane. If you look at the minimap, what exactly does me going bot lane do? It does absolutely nothing, so it's better to go top lane and get the kill on Trindamir. E. The enemy bottom lane is either dead or just went to base. Your ADC is not going to die to the creeps, right? Okay, so your ADC is safe now. What other things do we need to leave bottom lane? The bottom lane is pushed to the enemy tower. This is the most basic rule for any and all roaming and you should only break it in very specific situations. If you haven't pushed the lane into the enemy tower, you're going to miss XP and the enemy bottom lane has the chance to follow you before your ADC can if they spot you roaming. Although I have to say, missing XP as a support is not catastrophic as long as you get your laners ahead. For most roams to work, you have to push your lane. Fortunately, usually in low elo, players will allow you to do this, even though they shouldn't. So you can pretty much freely control the wave and just push it in. These lines represent when you can and can't leave both through river while the enemy is in lane. As long as you have the lane over the green line, you're pretty much safe to leave because the enemy bottom lane cannot follow you. If it's in the yellow line, you should pretty much only leave to save someone who's trying to escape through the river. And if the lane's beyond the red line, you can only leave through the bush behind the lane. Always remember that the enemy minions work as blockers for supports. If the creeps are beyond the green line, the enemy brom has to go through dry if he wants to follow you. And while doing so, he will always miss XP from the creeps, which is already a small win for you. Pushing also gives you vision if the enemy support decides to follow. Those are the two basic rules for when you can leave lane. Your ADC is safe, and you won't miss a whole lot of experience while roaming. Now, let's talk about when you should go somewhere else. If you see these things happening, and the two rules are made, it's a clear sign to go for a roam every single time. You can usually kill the enemy mid laner if they have pushed into your side of the map. If they're beyond the halfway point, you can catch players off guard. Sometimes you can roam mid even at level 2, as long as your own lane is pushed in and it's completely safe for you to leave bottom. Tagging along your jungler is the best way to make ganks or invades work. If you have enough time or nothing else to do, just move with your jungler for a second to see if you can do something. There's nothing happening in the bottom lane. If you're not needed in the bottom lane, you should always be out of there. In this one, I died earlier to a gank. The enemy pushed to the wave in, went back, Twitch pushed the wave and is now going to base. I have no reason to be bottom lane. Even though the mid laner is in the middle of the lane, it's still the best use of my time. Even though we don't get him. Oh, but wait a second. Twitch is still not in lane and Orion is playing like nothing happened. If you see the enemy jungler ganking mid, and you have time to get there, you should pretty much always start to move towards mid lane instantly. As long as you can't get collapsed on by the enemy bottom lane, which means the lane has to be pushed, and you have to see both of them at all times. If you want to gank the top laner in the early game, you should only go from straight to base, and I pretty much always recommend that you get mobile boots before going top lane, and only if you know that you can kill him. Roaming top early is one of the most impactful things you can do, especially if one of the top laners is a split pusher. If the split pusher is on your team, they can start splitting a lot more effectively and a lot faster. On the flip side, if your tank has a lead over their split pusher, it's gonna take longer for that split pusher to be impactful in the game. And if both teams have a split pusher, the stronger split pusher will always have the initiative on the weaker one. So if you can get your split pusher ahead, that is already 
a lot more options that your team is going to have. Keep in mind that you can be a little creative with your roams as well, especially if the enemy support is dead. After a skirmish in the middle lane, the enemy prom is dead, and since Tristana is looking the back, I have absolutely no reason to be in the bottom lane. Instead, I'm looking at the minimap and seeing where I can go. We just killed Vladimir, we see Maokai, I have nothing to do in the bottom lane, so I decided to go top lane to see if we can get a gank off on Jace. You can really easily catch people off guard with these types of roams. Since there was a skirmish in the middle lane like 20 seconds ago, Jace would probably never expect me to be in the top side. Now, let's talk about when you should not leave your lane. You're playing against an engaged support. Self-explanatory, just don't leave your immobile ADC Ash alone against an Alistar lane. You're they're just going to die. I already mentioned this, but I have to say it again. If you're playing with an immobile ADC, don't leave him alone against the Kalista, Draven, Tristana, or a level 6 Ash. Even if the bottom lane has like a, a Janna, it doesn't matter because those champions have the possibility to run down an immobile ADC on their own. If your lane is frozen on the enemy side of the lane, just go bottom lane. If you want to roam, at least push the lane into the tower and make it so it bounces back towards your side of the lane. Your ADC cannot miss all that gold, so you can roam a little bit more. It's just not worth it. Now, let's talk about things that can and will go wrong when you try this style of play. You overdo it. This is the single most dangerous trap of all when you're playing Thresh, but when you're playing this style of play, it's even worse. In this game I die early, and while I'm in base, I figured that I should go top lane since the wave is pushing towards me. So far it's all good. Unfortunately, Jax engages a little bit too early, and Nidalee happens to be in the top lane. So instead, I figured I should go into middle lane. It's the closest lane, and Nidalee might be coming around. I drop down a pink just in case we can see Nidalee coming, and we might be able to collapse with Yasuo. Just a few seconds later, we see Nidalee, and I ping Yasuo to come and kill her. So far, everything's good, but it's gonna take a turn in just a few seconds. Yasuo is still not responding to my pings, and I'm starting to tilt. Unnecessarily, I try to keep the fight going so Yasuo can come and clean it up. I see the teleport from Fiora coming and back off. But now Vi joins the fight, and I figure we can 2v2 this fight, since my hook is coming up in a few seconds. Unfortunately, I get hit by a spear. I was not expecting the flash, so I was sure that my hook would hit him, so I didn't even flash. And now, after 20 seconds of fighting, Yasuo finally comes up, but it's too late. They've already killed me, and this fight turns into a 2v3. This whole situation is a complete mess, and it started with my unnecessarily greedy play. After it was obvious that Yasuo would not follow up, I should just ignore the Nidalee and go bottom lane. Some people would argue that it's Yasuo's fault, but after he ignores all the pings on Italy, it's obvious that he can't see him and is focused on Zed instead. When you're roaming, it's extremely important that you're playing according to your teammates, however badly they may misplay. And this is the biggest trap of Thresh in low elo. Even if you think that you can get away with something, you might not, because your team does not follow up properly. And it's something that you have to keep in mind at all times. Second thing that could and will go wrong when you roam. You misjudge where you can roam and where you can't roam. As an example, roaming to top lane with two tanks is bad. Roaming to a lane which your team has pushed in is bad. Roaming to a lane that can 1v2 you is really bad. These things will happen, but you should never be afraid to try. If you want to play and actually learn Thresh, you will fail miserably many times. You're gonna get flamed by your teams, you're gonna get reported for trying something you haven't tried before, your ADCs in silver will hate your guts for leaving your lane for 5 seconds even if you get a kill mid lane. All of these things happen, but here's the thing. Personally I believe that it's infinitely more valuable to try and fail than to not try at all. That is the philosophy that I adopted when I started playing Thresh, and I believe that it's extremely important that you can think like that when you play the game, no matter which role or what champion you play. The third thing that can and will go wrong. 
You stay around the lane you're trying to roam to way too long. If you're bronze, silver, gold, even platinum, chances are that the longer you're away from bottom lane, the more likely it is that your ADC is going to int it. It's a little different in high low though. Ole, for example, is known for his extremely patient roams, and he stays around the lane for a good 20 to 30 seconds. The difference is, Master and Challenger ADCs can usually tolerate roaming supports as long as they get their job done. They know where they can and can stand when the support is away, and the impact of a successful roam is exponentially more valuable in high elo. None of this applies to bronze, silver, gold, or even platinum. Stay in the lane you want to roam to, as long as you can, but as soon as your ADC needs you, you have to go to bottom lane or else it's going to end the game. To summarize, rush Moby Boots and roam every chance you get, as long as it does not get your ADC killed or doesn't put him too far behind. Don't overdo it and don't roam for the sake of roaming. Only roam when it makes sense and only two lanes that makes sense to roam to. If you do this properly, you can win nearly every single game in low elo. That's all for today. I'm thinking of making a follow-up video on how to properly use the lead you get by doing this, because I think it's just as, if not even more important than getting the lead in the first place. But for now, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.